Hello friends, this is BB and welcome back to my channel. Here we are with a just chess game again from the day 2 of the semi-finals of Chessable Masters. So yesterday we shown uh, game 1 when Magnus was able to win it and in the other semi-final Anish Giri won against Jan Epomic. And here we are here with the day 2 and um, Ding needs to, to bounce back to win this. Otherwise if Magnus uh, wins this then we're gonna be 2-0. Uh, on the total score and Magnus is going to advance to the final. So, uh, the first uh, game of this day 2, Magnus was able to, to win it. Uh, Ding blundered the, the queen and so Magnus uh, won that game and the second one was a draw and here we are with the third game and Ding has the white pieces so he needs to win in demand otherwise if Magnus wins he advanced to the semi-finals. Without losing any more time I'm going to drive you straight into this uh, excellent game. So Ding Liren with white pieces opens with c4, so he again goes for the English, e5 from Magnus, the usual reply, and now g3. Again preparing to develop this light square bishop here, uh, the line that he chose also in the games that were played yesterday, that he got the white pieces, and now d5 from Magnus, he strikes in the center, and c captures on d5. Queen captures on d5, and now knight f3. Uh, so, uh, pretty standard stuff. And now knight c6 from Magnus developing that knight. Knight c3 from Ding attacking the queen. And now queen goes back to d8, the starting square. And now bishop g2. Ding develops that bishop. And knight f6. Keeping control on those, uh, on those squares here with the knights. And now uh, Ding just castles here. And we have h6 from Magnus. Maybe he wants to develop this bishop somewhere here in this diagonal and then a castle here and then when, when he does that he will have already played h6 so he, his king would have a breathing space over there. And so okay the game continues with Ding going d3 and now uh, bishop d6 from Magnus developing that bishop, a3 from Ding, a5 Magnus expands on the queen side and now we have b3 from Ding. And now Magnus just castles here, and as we said here, he has already played uh, h6, so he has a breathing, breathing room for the king. And now bishop b2 from Ding developing that bishop, and now rook e8. Rook c1, so we still don't have, uh, except one pawn, there is the, 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 all the pieces are on the board. So a bishop f5 from Magnus, and now a white goes h3. He also gives his king some breathing room because uh, maybe later he would have not be worried about back rank issues that he might have. And now queen d7 uh, connecting uh, this uh, bishop with the queen and, and also connecting rooks here. So this uh, is a very nice move for Magnus, queen d7. And now king h2. Ding puts his king in a safer square and now knight d4. Magnus goes for the center and now knight d2 from Ding. He doesn't want to trade pieces because as we said he needs to win this game so he should uh, have as many pieces as possible on the board. And now c6 from Magnus. e3 from Ding attacking that knight here. And now Magnus just moves the knight to b5. Also uh, wants to trade here. And now uh, Ding just goes knight captures on b5. He trades first and now C captures on B5. Magnus doubled, doubled his pawns, but it's not a problem because uh, here Ding has just two pawns here, so this double double pawn uh, might not be a problem for him for, for Magnus. So knight f3 from Ding. And now we have rook a to d8. Magnus develops the other rook, so all these pieces now are developed, and uh, he will go for the for, for the attack. And now e4 from Ding, attacking this, sorry about that, this bishop, this is not a bishop. And now bishop e6, the, uh, Magnus just goes back with the bishop and now bishop captures on e5. Uh, bishop captures on e5 and now we have knight captures on e5. So Ding uh, decides to, to trade, he thinks that uh, he, he will favor, favor, favor him those trades and he also wants to push this passed pawn here as we see because all, all these passed pawns must be pushed uh, so let's see what Magnus has to say about this he goes uh, queen d6 attacking uh, this knight here 
and now Ding just goes F4, protects the knight, and now uh, he he just gives up just gives up this pawn because he, he this pawn was under attack and also the knight was under attack, so he should have he he. He must protect the knight, so uh, with this one he gives up this pawn and Magnus immediately goes for captures on a3. So he won a pawn here, and now we have d4 from Ding. So he he's giving uh, this pawn also, uh, so he can just push this pawn. And uh, Magnus goes for it, he goes bishop captures on b3, so now he is up two pawns. And now we have Queen D3 from from Ding. In fact, Magnus is up uh, just one pawn here, but uh, but he has those those two connected pass pawns here that uh, might be very dangerous for later. Uh, so the Queen was under attack, and Ding moves it to D3, and now Queen B4 from Magnus. Just uh, just put that uh, that Queen on. Um, on a dark square, so Ding has only one light square bishop, so it cannot be opposed. And now d5. Uh, Ding finally, finally got uh, got his his plan on on the move. So he pushed pushed that uh, that pass pawn. So you want to push all the way, and maybe if Magnus allows it, he just uh, wants to queen that pawn. And now rook c8 for Magnus. He wants to trade rooks, but. Uh, uh, Ding goes rook c to d8. Uh, Ding goes d6 first, so he pushes that pawn, and now we have rook c to d8. Magnus just goes back with the rook, and now Ding goes d7. So he just uh, is attacking the rook here, and uh, he thinks that uh, with pushing this pawn, he he has a winning uh, winning game. But in fact, this d7 loses the game terribly, and. Uh, here you can just think for a second, and maybe you you will find uh, how how Magnus wins here. So Magnus has a clear win here. So he goes uh, he goes for it. So he just gives up a temporary piece for the moment, because and he goes knight captures on d7, and of course Dean captures that piece, captures a knight. It's a free knight. Why not? And now knight captures on d7. But now the beautiful move of Magnus, he goes bishop c4. And now he Ding has a lot of problems here. So this queen is under attack and also the rook here is under attack. So he should uh, move the queen somehow. And he goes uh, the queen to d1. Uh, but now Ding didn't go for the rook, of course. Uh, he goes queen e7. And now this this knight here it's under attack. So uh, what can you do now in this in the in this position? Well, you have nothing to do here. And so it was in this position on move uh, 29 that Ding Leon resigns the game because uh, this knight is trapped here. So if you just if you you it's attacked twice here, and it's only protected protected one time by the queen. So if you move it anywhere, the rook will just uh, gobble up the queen here, and there is nothing more to to be done. So Magnus did a brilliancy here. We just uh, in 29 moves he was able to beat uh, Ding Liren that it's uh, 2800 rated. So such an achievement, and this shows again uh, how strong uh, the world champion is. And uh, that was all for this game, guys. Thank you all for watching. You can watch also other games in the in the two videos uh, right here that gonna be up. And uh, thank you all for watching. The, and uh, we'll see you soon with the final of the Chessable Masters. Blessings all.